What if I told you there is a Warframe who can one-tap Steel Path Heavy Gunners, spread viral, boost crit damage by up to 300%, and in case she dies, uh, she just decides not to die? This is Dagath. She's the new Warframe, comes out tomorrow, and thanks to DE generously sponsoring this video, I get to show you everything you need to know about her one day early. So in this guide, we're gonna talk about Dagath, her skills, which builds work best, and of course, how you can get your hands on her as soon as possible. One quick disclaimer, this video was recorded on the dev build, so everything you see here might still be subject to change. One massive shout out to all my generous channel members who helped me keep the lights on. And now, let's jump right into it. First of all, how do you get Agath? Naturally, if you want to avoid the farm, you can always go and buy her from Platinum in the market. But to access her blueprints, you'll first have to go and build the new room, Dagoth's Hollow, in your clan's dojo. Uh, or you just go on your clan leader's nerves so that they do that for you. If you then interact with the Shrine of Dagoth, you'll be able to start the research for the blueprints for her as well as her signature weapon. Now, in order to build these items, you will need a new resource called Veinthorns. These Veinthorns are obtained from a new mission node on Ceres, which is also introduced with the new update, and it is an exterminate mission, but it does have the following twists. First, you'll need an item called Abyssal Beacon to even be able to access the mission in the first place. These beacons can be obtained from all six syndicates, so no matter who you're aligned with, you'll always be fine. Once you're in the mission, you'll run into various syndicate operatives who are also marked blue on your map. And uh, when you talk to them, they'll highlight an area on your map in which you can find an item called Defixio. It's kind of like a red glowing lantern. Your goal in this mission is to bring one of those Defixios to the extraction point once you've cleared all the enemies. In case you play with your friends, then one Defixio per player is needed. But that's not the only quirk here, because First, once you pick a Defixio up, you'll receive a random debuff, and second, if you get close to finishing the mission, like if you've killed enough enemies, reinforcements will arrive, turning the whole thing into an Eximus Stronghold mission. So, long story short, get the key from a Syndicate, start the mission, talk to an Operative, grab the Defixio, slay all the enemies, receive Veinthorns as a mission reward, and then use them to build Dagoth from the Dojo Blueprints. Uh, by the way, I should mention that the amount of Veinthorns received per mission is still not final here in the test build and might change till the release tomorrow. But alright, now that you know how to get her, let's look into what Dagoth can actually do. First, her passive ability is really nice, because she has a 35% chance that both health and energy orbs will be three times as strong when you pick them up. And that's quite fitting, because as we will see, Dagoth can be quite energy hungry. Now, as we dive into the skills, today I actually want to start with her second ability before we talk about the first. It'll make more sense this way. Dagoth's 2 is called Doom, and what it does is it puts enemies into a state where the damage you deal is reflected onto them again a second later with this little scythe over their head. Also, they do take viral damage. Now, the reason I started with this one is because of her first ability, Word Scythes, Weird Scythes, Wired Scythes, I don't know how to pronounce this. This ability is able to spread the Doom effect from her 2 onto nearby enemies, extending its duration, dealing even more viral damage with a guaranteed status effect, all while at the same time slowing enemies that are hit by it by up to 95%. So, all in all, great crowd control, viral application, and this is also her helmet ability. However, the real reason why you want to use it to spread the doom effect and make sure that pretty much everyone is doomed all the time is her third ability, Grave Spirit. This one is very powerful, because what it does is it boosts your weapon's critical damage and this buff is doubled on enemies that are affected by doom. But that's not all, because this ability also protects you from death. Once you switch it on, it will be on and buff you forever. However, if you die, it will save you, make you invincible for some time, and after that, you will be alive again with a 25 second cooldown until you can activate the skill again. Now, 
This might sound like it's a really great way to stay alive constantly, but actually I would advise to not get killed all too often because the 25 second cooldown cannot be reduced and of course during this time your crit buff will also not be active. So I'd say it's more like a get out of jail free card in case you accidentally get nuked away. And finally, let's also look at our fourth skill, Rakali's Cavalry. This one is… Uh, difficult. While it does deal a metric buttload of viral damage, and I really don't want to understate just how strong this is, it is also quite clunky to cast, locking you into this animation, and it is expensive with a cost at 100 energy. Now, admittedly, this skill not only deals damage, but also can strip away enemy defenses if they are in the doomed state that we talked about earlier. And yes, with enough ability strength, you can also full strip. And by the way, I would be super happy if you could spare a like to help this video spread to more Tenno out there. Cheers for your support! But alright, now that we know what Dagoth has in stock for us, how will her playstyle actually look in practice? Well, what we need to understand is, Dagoth is first and foremost a weapon platform. She's made to stay alive even against strong enemies, all while at the same time massively supporting her weapon's damage output. So what you want to do in practice is, first, have your 3 on all the time for the big crit boost and also to have that one get out of jail free card. Next, cast her 2 to doom an enemy and from then on spam her first skill to constantly spread this doom effect to apply viral and to massively slow your foes. This is the main part of her kit. Her 4, while looking very cool, in my opinion is gonna be the one to replace with something better from the helminth because it's just too clunky to cast and too expensive just to be used as an armor strip. If you wanna strip defenses, then rather go for Necros' Terrify here or use this lodge to give her an ability that helps with energy supply. And by the way, in case you're struggling with your energy economy, I recently uploaded the guide to help with just that. But I know, I know, you want to see builds. And builds you will get. Now, with Dagoth, I want to split the build section into two different parts. First, where we look into survivability and how we can keep her alive, and then secondly, diving into her ability maximization. That being said, how do we keep Dagoth alive now? Let's look at her stats for that. This is how she looks like at level 30 and it's very interesting. On the one hand, she has quite the health pool with 666. Uh, by the way, very nice DE, I see what you did there. But she's not necessarily a health tank because of her basically non-existing armor. So is she a shield gator instead? Well, also kind of no, because with the changes coming to shield gating, from now on you want to have more rather than less shields. And in this context, 250 is meh at best. Uh, by the way, if you want to know all the details about the new shield gating, I also have a video on that too. But now, what are we going to do with Dagoth? Well, after quite some testing, I found two kind of unconventional methods to make both health tanking and shield gating work. So let's take a look at the health part first. If we want a health tank, then we need a good health pool to work with. So. Umbral Vitality it is. Also, we pair that with Umbral Intensify because it first boosts the effect of Umbral Vitality even further and also the ability strength will come in handy later. And next, we add Arcane Blessing because that extra health is gonna be really valuable. So much for HP. Now let's look into armor. Since her base armor is pretty much paper mache, armor percent mods like Steel Fiber won't help us. That's why we're gonna go with health conversion, giving us up to 1350 absolute armor and then we combine that further with an armor arcane like Guardian or Reaper. Now, as you might have guessed, both arcane blessing and health conversion require you to pick up loads of health orbs constantly. To ensure that this is even gonna happen, we infuse either Citrine's Fractured Blast or Varuna's Lycuff's Hunt as helmet ability onto our fourth slot. And finally, as a second layer of defense, we also drop in adaptation. 
This is the survivability part of your build should you decide to go with a health tanking approach. We'll fill the rest of these slots as we talk about the abilities here in a minute. But now, let's go over the, in my personal opinion, better way to keep Daggeth alive, which will be the new shield gating. With this update, the shield gating and vulnerability timeframe can now last up to 2.5 seconds. This is the case if your Warframe has at least 1150 shields restored before the shield breaks. And that's exactly what we're aiming for here. So, to get our shields from 250 to 1150, we first add redirection, raising the bar to 500 already. And then, we slot in enough blue Archon shards to get us from 500 to the desired 1150. If you haven't unlocked Archon shards yet, then no problem, you'll just have to be a bit faster while playing or instead go with the health approach from before. Now, with our max shields at 1150, we just need to be able to also refill them to that at a moment's notice. And uh, to do so, I personally recommend using Harrow Skill Condemn via the Helmet, because it's first cheap to cast and second gives you crowd control on enemies and, most importantly, you can push your shields to the moon with it in just a split second. Hildren's Pillage might also be a candidate here, but in my personal opinion, it's just too slow to keep up with the shield gating timing. And finally, I personally also like Brief Respite in the Aura slot here, because while it doesn't even get close to refilling all of your shields, that little bit after ability cast should give you that extra fraction of a second of invulnerability that you need between casting Heroes Condemn and it actually coming into effect. So all in all, this is how the survivability part of your build looks like if you go for shield gating. But alright. Now that you know how to keep her alive and well, and chose one of the two options, let's finally look into how you get the most out of her abilities. First off, since she's very energy hungry, we're gonna use Flow or if you have Primed Flow to get more maximum energy. Then, no matter how you use her, Ability Strength will be your primary focus. It increases the crit buff from her 3, intensifies the slow from her 1, and also leads to more damage from her 2. So, I personally went for Umbral Intensify on both builds, in combination with Blind Rage and for the Shield Gate build, even Molt Augmented in the Arcane slot. Now, in order to compensate for the reduction in efficiency by Blind Rage on the HP build, we first have Citrine's and Varuna's Helminth skill, which are both excellent energy sources, and then in addition we go for Hunter Adrenaline, which converts health damage into even more energy. And for the shield build, I went for Arcane Energize, but if you don't have that, you could also always just use Narrow Minded instead of Blind Rage or add in Streamline. Now, the next step will be to also add some more range, which is great for her first skill, so we slap on Stretch on both builds. That now would already conclude the health build, and for the Aura and Exilus, just use whatever you feel like, and in the shield gating build, you can now pick and choose freely for the left open mod slot. I personally went for Augur Secrets for even a bit more strength and natural talent to spam those abilities even faster. Abyss of Daggoth launches tomorrow, October 18th. Be sure to log in and enjoy her with everything you've learned here today. But of course, this new update not only brings Daggoth, but also a ton of other changes and reworks. So if you don't want to miss out on all that, then you might want to think about joining the crew and leaving the channel a sub. Another massive shout out to Akimbo Fate, Niels V, Lamies, Demon Lord Zell, and all other generous channel members, as well as also another thank you to DE for generously sponsoring this video. I hope to see you all in the next one, and until then, as always, good loot.